Okay, welcome to part number three <coughs> of this tutorial on writing and producing orchestral and classical music with sound libraries and MIDI. On this uh, third part, I am going to start writing the lines for the <coughs> string parts. So this is probably going to be a long part because I plan to do this in real time with no cuts. Uh, and the idea is to record all the different tries that I might be doing here or not. It depends on how easy it comes. So for you to uh, <coughs> notice, there is a little difference uh, uh, regard, uh, in comparison with the part number two. And the difference is that I decided to divide the cellos into the pieces. So for that reason, I have cellos number one here and uh, cellos number two here. As you can probably see on the mixer, I have a basic setup here, which is there is a little bit of pan to the right into for, for the second cellos and a little bit of pan to the left for the first ones. Other than that, uh, there is nothing uh, else. There is no reverb, there is no EQ, there is nothing. This is just the raw sound coming from the sound library. We are going to be dealing with the mixing EQ if effects and stuff like that later. So, uh, the idea for the song is that uh, the piano starts alone and at this moment we have this really low string section in the background. Like this. So we are going to be dealing with this, uh, about this part for now. Um, and you may be wondering why I decided to divide the cellos. Well, the reason is that, as you can see, I am dealing here with really, well, relatively uh, low chords, like I'm not playing notes here. So I need a few more, um, uh, a few more options with notes around this part of the keyboard or this part of the scale. And that is where, where the cellos and the violas uh, are going to be playing. So uh, I could have divided the violins, but the violins are usually about this range. And I am not going to be using this range. Uh, as you can see, the kind of chord that I'm going to record here is the typical one bass note and then an inversion of, uh, in, in this case, is a D minor chord like A, D, F. So the idea is that the top note is going to be played by the violas. These two notes here are going to be played by the cellos. That's the reason why I divided the cellos in two parts or two divisions. And then I'm going to be adding later an extra track uh, with uh, basses for this bottom note. So let's see what happens. Um, so the idea is So let's see how this works. Let, let, let's start with the violas. Uh, probably we need to turn on the microphones for the violas. Uh, here. Oops. By the way, another thing about this library is that depending on how hard I press the key, that is the speed for the slide or for the legato effect. So if I do it really slow, really soft like this, you can see that the slide is like, uh, but if I do it really quick, sorry, really hard on the key, you can see that it is still a legato. So the bow is not leaving the string but you get a, a way, way faster uh, slide. And this is what is going to blend the notes. Uh, and this is the reason why you want to use 
separate parts for the chords uh, as opposed uh, to doing this. Because the idea is to try not to sound fake. So um, you cannot do that just by playing the chords on a standard string patch like, the, like, like this one. It's not gonna work. Like, we probably could uh, make this sound a little bit better by adding a little bit of, uh, actually a lot of river to cover up for that, but still it's going to be really fake. So, for now, let's forget about this and let's start writing the top note. Let's see, let's, let's make first a try and then we're going to record. So we start here. So, this is the part that we are going to be recording today, so let's try to record this. Okay, so we have this uh, first note here. Uh, let me just put uh, repeat mode on this. So, as you can see here on the mixer, there is nothing on this uh, uh, violas. No reverb, no EQ, no nothing, and they are panned to the center, which is kind of okay for now. However, I'm going to tweak a little bit the EQ, the EQ for this. So, I want to remove a little bit of that frequency, which is actually the one that contains the bow noises and stuff like that. And I'm going to also remove pretty much all of the low end because I don't need it for the violas. And there is a lot of noise coming from the bow and stuff like that. And I'm going to be, for now, I'm going to leave the, so the sound dry for the time being. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's add the first or the high note for the cellos sections. S section, sorry. Remember that the cellos are divided in two parts, so I have one here and, and another here. They are exactly the same patch, but is the complete section divided in two parts. So uh, let's do a, tr a try a test with this. Okay, that's kind of okay. 
let's just record this So there is a uh, uh, there is a, a a little problem with this, which is if you see the slide or, or the legato, uh, sample is too loud, and and this library allows you to change that. Um, so let's go to this one and uh, legato volume. We are going to reduce that a little bit, and also we are going to choose the close microphones for this. Let's wait for it to load. It's a big patch. <laughs> yeah, that's actually much better. Okay, so let's see how this sound together. Actually, I just realized that I moved the... Okay, for some reason... Oh, this is fine, okay. So these are the cellos, sorry. Okay, so let's deal a little bit with the EQ for the cellos. Let's wait for it to... I'm going to remove a little bit of the high end for the cellos. I don't want that much fretting noise. But it's okay. I'm going to cut a little bit of the really low end, about 60 hertz. And I'm going to increase a little bit the dominant frequency for the cellos which is about 300 hertz or so. So let's see how this sounds again. Okay, so this is kind of nice now. Okay, so one more time. Okay, so this is cool. So let's go with the low note for the cellos now, which is going to be this one. And we are going to be doing an A. So let's see how that, let, let's give it, give it a try.
Okay, we have a problem here with the sound. Let me just check something here. So yeah, we should be using the closed microphones for this. Because if you use different micro microphone uh, positions for the different parts of a, of the same section, it's going to sound really fake or really strange, and that is not what you want. So you really want to be sure that you're using the same microphones so that the sound is coherent uh, and, and makes sense. Again, we're going to reduce a little bit the legato volume. Okay, that is okay. And let's try this again. There's probably a note that I want to put here. Okay, so let's record this. Okay, so we have a basic three parts uh, harmony right now. Let's take a look at this on the mixer. First, let's deal with the EQ for these cellos. Probably about the same that we did for the other, however. Let's rise a little bit, mid-high stuff here. Okay, so... So what we are missing here... <clears throat> are the bases right now and of course the reverb so what I'm going to do now I'm going to take all of these uh, string parts uh, except for this one which is actually the fake uh, and I'm going to create a group channel, which is a bass in other workstations for these uh, tracks. Let's call it uh, Agitato Strings. Mm, okay, let's unsolo everything. So we have here <clears throat> all of the strings, as you can see, at once on a single channel. So what we can do here is now, now we can EQ the complete section back. So I can just, for example, let's wait for it to play again. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to raise a little bit the high end now for the complete section. I am going to reduce a little bit the low end.
and I'm going to apply the whole reverb now to the complete uh, ensemble and this is going to change things a lot let's let's see what happens I think that the violas are a little bit high, high in level. Okay, so that's quite okay for me. I still think that the volume for the legato samples on these low cellos is a little bit too high, so I'm going to reduce that a little bit. And we're going to be adding now uh, we are going to be adding now <coughs> a, a, a track for the basses. I actually have a track here on a different um, sample library, which is still from ADIO, which is uh, uh, the Adagio uh, strings. So let's enable the close microphone for the basses here. Whoop. So, I want the basses uh, uh, for this to be really soft, so I'm going to just reduce a little bit of the high end, because I really care about the low end here. That's nice. And let's give it a little bit of uh, reverb. And let's see how it mixes with the rest. Okay, so that sounds quite nice to me. Okay, so we have a complete harmony in here. Let's review a little bit of the EQ for the basses. Because I actually went too far and reduced too much of the high end. That's better. We are going to be tweaking now a little bit of this uh, river instance. Uh, 
Let's make it a little longer. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's way better. And let's change the EQ a little bit more for these ones. Okay, so, so far what we have is a complete uh, harmony here, which is consisting of, of two cellos part, one violas part, and the basses for now. Okay, so uh, this concludes part three on this tutorial. On part number four, we are going to be dealing with giving these uh, string parts the expression they need, like higher or lower pressure on the bow and stuff like that. And that is going to give like the final detail for them to sound really uh, uh, way, way more real than they are uh, sounding now. So see you in part four. Bye bye.